So what we have here in front of us is the memorial portrait of Mary Queen of Scots um, and this portrait's all about memory and martyrdom. So what's really interesting about the painting is it was actually commissioned in 1612 by Elizabeth Curl and thankfully for us Elizabeth Curl is actually in the painting. She's just on the right hand side with Jane Kennedy um, and Elizabeth Curl had this painting commissioned in order to memorialise her queen and the woman who she stood beside most of her life. And what's a rare insight within this painting is we actually see Mary as she walked to the executioner's block in Fotheringham Castle. So Mary is presented completely in black. She would have held the crucifix in her hand, she would have had one around her neck, and she also would have had a prayer book. As she walked towards the executioner's block, she removed the black and underneath was red, traditionally the colour of martyrdom in Catholicism. As you can see on the left hand side, you're presented with the scene as it took place. Now sources tell us that Mary actually heard the scaffolding being built below her feet the night before she was due to face her execution. You know, you're talking about a woman, she, she's, she's 44. She spent 20 years locked away, imprisoned, um, and essentially she's being killed because she's a Catholic. So there's no other reason for it. Um, the um, English Parliament didn't like her from the off. She was a threat to Elizabeth. Um, personally, I don't believe Elizabeth wanted to kill her. I think she understood the dangers of killing a monarch, you know, and. And when there wasn't maybe divine intervention as they potentially expected there to be, um, it opened the floodgates for the execution of Charles I, you know, and to, to be able to push James II out of being king as well. So as she stood on the executioner's block, obviously you'll see when you go into the painting, there are two marks across the back of her neck. It actually took three strokes of the axe to take Mary's head off. And as you can see in the painting, the axeman is coming down for the third and final stroke. Sources tell us that actually Mary was awake through the first two and she continued to pray throughout. The painting completely portrays Mary as she wanted to be. It shows how devout she was throughout her life. Now we know again from sources when she was in Scotland she was incredibly liberal at the time. Obviously when she came back to Scotland when she was 17, she comes back to Scotland at a time it's turned Protestant. You know, there are still people following the Catholic faith, um, but coming from France, which is predominantly Catholic, um, she comes into a country that she has no idea how it works, how it operates, um, and she was always taught to trust the men around you and unfortunately it, it ended up being her undoing. She thought she could trust blindly and not really realising that all these men kind of wanted to claim to her throne because they believed they would be better at it simply because they were men. So while Mary was in, uh, incarcerated, she had several small portraits painted. It wasn't allowed, she wasn't meant to, but what it would be done, it would be sent around to loyal supporters and basically they would have that. So it's a belief that Jane Kennedy and Elizabeth Curl themselves had one of these portraits, these tiny, tiny little miniatures, and they would have given that to the artist. So this is the Blair's Jewel, and what it, it actually shows us a miniature of uh, Mary, Queen of Scots. But what is particularly interesting about this one is it celebrates Mary as a martyr. Um, so we believe the miniature was potentially painted while she was imprisoned in England, as I mentioned to you earlier. Um, and at some point later on, it has been set into this clasp for somebody to wear. Now, when you have a look at it closely, what you'll see are usually the vines, the fruits, the flowers. But interestingly, on the back, there is her monogram, so Maria Regina Angelorum. Um, but it's also covered by other names of martyrs and people who have been turned into saints over the time. Um, so it actually allows us to date this piece to about 1622 because we can see when those people were sainted. Um, it's believed to be only one of four still left surviving and that's just the miniature. So it's very much believed that this is the miniature that this portrait was based on. So there's the belief that it would have believed belonged to Elizabeth Curl and eventually made its way to us. And then obviously the rest would have been done on memory. 
So what they knew, because they were the only two women outside of the British Parliament and the men that were there to have witnessed Mary's execution. After Mary was executed, they burnt all of her belongings. Um, there was a real fear, essentially with the aspect of martyrdom, there was a real fear that everything she owned would become a relic and she would become a saint. Um, and in order to do that, they destroyed it. And they, they didn't even bury her. They left her inside Fotheringham Chapel for I think it's close to about three, four months before they actually interred her into the ground. Um, which even in a Protestant country, is, it's practically unheard of why you would ever treat somebody's body in, in that way. You know, it, it would be sacrilege. <laughs> Um, but they do it in order to, to take the power away from her and take the power away from her followers, hoping to, to quash down this Catholic uprising. You know, you're looking at a country, even in Scotland, that has gone from Catholicism to Protestantism, back to Catholicism, back to Protestantism. And I think the Parliament probably believed they were working for, for the better good in, in trying to just keep one religion, keep it going. Um, but they probably should have followed Mary's model. So what I find really interesting, my fun fact actually about this painting, is how it managed to survive. So after Elizabeth Curl had it commissioned and it was finished, she gifted it to the Scots College in Dewey in Paris and said it would stay there um, while it was able to. Obviously during the French Revolution, um, when the revolution began to attack church and monarchy, um, somebody actually cut it from its original frame and ran away with it and gave it to a friend to hide up a disused chimney where it stayed for almost a hundred years. <laughs> um, pretty big, I would have thought. It's amazing actually it wasn't damaged or that somebody at some point went back and thought, I'm going to open the chimney, we're going to light a fire. Like, I mean, thank goodness that they didn't. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah. It, as soon as it was discovered within that disused chimney, it came straight back to Blair's, which at that point had just become a seminary um, through John Menzies, as he'd gifted it because he had no heirs, and he'd gifted it to the church. Thank you so much for watching these videos about the Scottish Catholic Heritage Collections Trust and our wonderful treasures. Blair's Museum is located just outside of Aberdeen, and we are open from April until September and you can learn about visiting arrangements and how to book your ticket at www.schct.org.uk. And when you get here, you can learn all about the history of Catholicism, Mary Queen of Scots, the Jacobites. You can help us by purchasing goods from our shop. You can also do that online, or you can also support us by donating to us online.